Today I'll be showing you how I sew up the baby bandana bib from Waves and Wild, previously made by Jack's mom. This is another of Sarah's free patterns, which is so great. I have tons of these bibs because then my baby can always match his outfits. They are really small, you can sew them up with scrap fabric, and then I don't have to keep changing his outfit when he spits up, I can just change his bandana. And at the end of the video, I'll be showing how to um, put in the cam snaps, so stay tuned for that. A great thing about this pattern is you can make it in tons of different fabrics. Here I have three different examples, 100% cotton jersey, a cotton lycra jersey, and cotton lycra interlock. So this one has horizontal stretch, but not as much vertical. This one is four-way stretch, and this one is four-way stretch because of the knit type, but it doesn't have any lycra in it, so it's not as stretchy. Because this pattern gets top stitched all the way around, it doesn't matter if your fabric has stretch or not, and it also doesn't matter which way your grain line is going, so it makes it great for using up scraps. For example, this Rick and Morty fabric, I had to sew together a couple scraps to make it work. And then um, for the backing, I'm using a bamboo baby terry, so stretchy, really soft toweling. And to make the most of my fabric, I'm just putting the pattern piece any which way to get the most out of it. This bandana bib is asymmetrical, which makes it really cute. And it also means that you need to cut it near image. So the front is cut this way and the back is cut this way. I already have all my materials cut out, but this is just to illustrate how I do it. I uh, weigh down my pattern piece with these washers that I got at Home Depot. And then I use my 28 millimeter rotary cutter and just right around the edge there. I've clipped my two layers right sides together and I drew a little one inch line here just to show that I'm going to be leaving that gap open for turning it right sides out. I'm going to just use a straight stitch on my machine, length three, and top stitch all the way around, carefully turning, lifting the foot and turning this at the corners and using the hand wheel to go one stitch at a time to make a nice curve. Here at the corner, you can see that I've been pivoting the fabric, leaving the needle in while I lift the foot, pivot the fabric, foot back down, and then advance the needle forward by turning the hand wheel towards me. And that's how I'm getting around this nicely. Another thing that really helps when working with stretch fabrics like I am is to have a walking foot and a ballpoint needle. Now that I have sewn these right sides together, leaving a turning hole, I cut them with pinking shears around the three corners to make sure that they will be able to be more crisp when they're turned right sides out. You can also use regular scissors and just cut notches. So my next step is to iron on the fusible interfacing in the two rounded corners for reinforcing the snaps later. If you don't have interfacing, you can just slip in a little square of woven later, so you don't have to iron that on or worry about it yet. And after I do that, I'm going to turn them right sides out, of course, through the turning hole, and then poke out the three corners so they're nice and crisp. I like to use these chopsticks that I've sharpened in a pencil sharpener. One I kept pointy, and the other I uh, cut the tip off and sanded it a little so it's more blunt. Now that they're turned right sides out, I'm gonna iron them nice and flat, and then you could top stitch around the entire thing, but I don't really think that's necessary, so I'm just gonna top stitch, close this one inch gap. I'm gonna thread match the top fabric and leave the bobbin white for all three. The final step for these bandana bibs is to apply the snaps. I like to use these plastic cam snaps in size 20. You can see I have a whole bunch of colors so I'm able to match however I like. The way these work is you have a prong and then a male and a female, also called a 
stud and a socket, or as I like to call them, an Audi and an Innie. So each one fits onto the prong like this and kind of pinches around the fabric. So the prong on one side and then the socket or stud on the other side. And you use these pliers to squeeze it, which kind of smushes down the prong and holds it together. So this is why we reinforced where the snaps are gonna go with the interfacing. Mine was iron-on, so remember I did that before I turned them right side out, but if you didn't do that and you're just using strips of woven, then before you um, close your turning hole, you slip in those pieces of woven. So I will show you now how to put the snaps in. So to apply these snaps, you're gonna take your awl and you poke a hole so that you're able to put the snap right through. So about right here, I can feel, I have my reinforcement right there. Poke it all the way through. And then I'm gonna have this side go through this way. So you pinch, put that through. And then this one is gonna be the any. So I just place that right there. And then I take my pliers and it just goes right like that. I check that it's all lined up properly. Have to push that in a little. There, see, kind of clicked that in. And just give it a nice firm squeeze. They make tabletop presses as well in case maybe you don't have hand strength to do that. All right, that looks great. So the important thing is now for the other side, I want it to clip like this, right? So I have to put the other one facing up. So on one side, I have the back. And on the other side, I have the front. And here is my finished bib bandana and it works really nicely because I reinforced that if you didn't put anything in and it was just these two layers of the stretchy fabric it would be harder to open and it would be more prone to ripping so I definitely recommend putting in that reinforcement if you're using woven material for both of them instead of stretch for both layers that might not be an issue for you but it really it still can't hurt all right, well, enjoy making the bandana bibs. Thanks for another free pattern from Sarah at Waves and Wild.